Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungso. Pray for us. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. 
Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob departed from Beersheba and proceeded toward Haran. When he came upon a certain shrine, as the sun had already set, he stopped there for the night. Taking one of the stones at the shrine, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep at that spot. Then he had a dream. A stairway rested on the ground with its top reaching to the heavens, and God's messengers were going up and down on it. And there was the Lord standing beside him and saying, I, the Lord, am the God of your forefather Abraham and the God of Isaac. The land on which you are lying, I will give to you and your descendants. These shall be as plentiful as the dust of the earth, and through them you shall spread out east and west, north and south. In you and your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. Know that I am with you. I will protect you wherever you go and bring you back to this land. I will never leave you until I have done what I promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he exclaimed, Truly, the Lord is in this spot, although I did not know it. In solemn wonder, he cried out, How awesome is this shrine! This is nothing else but an abode of God, and that is the gateway to heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head, set it up as a memorial stone, and poured oil on top of it. He called the site Bethel, whereas the former name of the town had been Luz. Jacob then made this vow. If God remains with me, to protect me on this journey I am making, and to give me enough bread to eat and clothing to wear, and I come back safe to my father's house, the Lord shall be my God. This stone that I have set up as a memorial stone shall be God's abode. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In you, my God, I place my trust. In you, my God, I place my trust. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. In you, my God, I place my trust. For he will rescue you from the snare of the fowler, from the destroying pestilence. With his pinions he will cover you, and under his wings you shall take refuge. In you, my God, I place my trust. Because he clings to me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he acknowledges my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. In you, my God, I place my trust. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Wika in mo, o o nakikinig ako sa iyo. Salita, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
While Jesus was speaking, an official came forward, knelt down before him, and said, My daughter has just died, but come, lay your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus rose and followed him, and so did his disciples. A woman suffering hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the tassel on his cloak. She said to herself, If only I can touch his cloak, I shall be cured. Jesus turned around and saw her and said, Courage, daughter, your faith has saved you. And from that hour, the woman was cured. When Jesus arrived at the official's house and saw the flute players and the crowd who were making a commotion, he said, Go away. The girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. When the crowd was put out, he came and took her by the hand, and the little girl arose. And news of this spread throughout all the land. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. As Filipino Catholics, we have been told that whenever it is our first time to enter a church, we stop and whisper a prayer inside that church. And for some, we were even told that we could silently mention a wish that we would want to be granted. That would also hold true whenever we would go on a pilgrimage to a holy site or to a pilgrim church. Most of the time, we can get mesmerized with the beauty of the structure. We can easily get enamored with the elegance of the sanctuary. We can be captivated with the brilliance of the precious metals that adorns the altar and the tabernacle. And whenever we are captured with that external beauty, we can easily say, truly, this is God's house. Truly, God is present here in this place. And I think that is also the experience of first-time visitors here in the, Manila, in the Manila Cathedral with this with its grandiosity, with its rich history, with its fine architecture, tourists and pilgrims would not miss to take their photographs inside this church, inside this cathedral. And as simple as that, we could easily associate the beauty of the church structure with the presence of God. And truly, with the presence of the tabernacle in the sanctuary, with the masses and prayers offered in this place of worship, we can take hold of this reality that God is present in this place. Looking at our first reading, Jacob was able to recognize the presence of God where he was sleeping, not because of a grandiose structure, not because of a fine architecture, but with a simple dream. He was in the middle of nowhere with just a rock to support his head, with a rock to rest on during his sleep. Yet he was able to recognize the presence of God in that place because of that particular dream. And it didn't stop there. Jacob pleaded the Lord to be with him in his journey, to bless him as he goes on with his voyage. And that is also true whenever we visit a pilgrim church or a shrine. We acknowledge the presence of God in those places of worship, but we also recognize the presence of God in our lives. We beg the Lord to bless us and to accompany us in every step of our journey so that whenever we step outside the church, we step outside that pilgrim, with that pilgrim site from that pilgrim place, we are assured that God is with us every step of the way. But reality would also show us 
that that journey would not be a smooth sailing one. Our gospel would remind us of these harsh realities that we would encounter along the way. Namely, a death of a loved one and a severe sickness. But our gospel would also encourage us that these realities are not the end that God intends for us. Jacob was so sure that God will be with him in every step of his journey. While the official and the woman in our gospel was also sure that something beautiful will, come out of, will, will also come out of their faith. We may be facing harsh realities along the journey, but that is not the end that God intends for all of us. We may not directly experience the healing power that we are looking for, but every pilgrimage that we make to a place of worship is a constant reminder that God has prepared an eternal home where we will experience that true beauty, that true peace in God's presence. The woman in our gospel bled for 12 years. The official may have come earlier to prevent the death of her daughter. But in the end, it was their faith that assured them that Jesus has prepared something beautiful for them. Hopefully, this is also what we could beg for. The grace to see the, grace to see the beauty of what God has prepared for us. The grace to persevere as we face harsh realities of our lives. And the grace to see that God is constantly accompanying us every step of the way. Please stand. God never intended us to die. He created us for life, but we chose death. Christ, our Redeemer, restores us to life, and we come to our Father praying through Him. For every intention we will say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer that the church may be a symbol of Christ's healing work by its care for those who are sick in body, mind, and spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That doctors and nurses and all those who care for the sick may show the compassion and gentleness of Jesus in caring for the least of his brethren. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That people suffering from poverty may be drawn to Jesus, who became poor for our sake. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may bind up hearts that are broken through our kind deeds and consoling wor words. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the faithful departed may enjoy the radiant dawn of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, keep healing us from all evil and let your goodness shine on us by the power of Jesus Christ. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time, he was betrayed and answered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered in Suwan by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Anthony Zachariah, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but, deliver but deliver us from, us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy, worthy that you that should, you should enter, enter under, my under my roof, but only but say only the, say word, the and word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.